Welcome everybody! And in this video we are going to be covering our butterfly wish painting. So let's get started. All right so in this painting I'm using a uh, canvas board but a normal canvas works. Any surface works really. Um, but for colors we're going to be using white, red, yellow, cobalt blue, and ultramarine blue, and black. So make sure you guys got those. And we're also going to be using three brushes. One being a nice large flat brush like this guy here. I also have a nice kind of medium filbert slash uh, bright, either works. We don't discriminate with our brushes. What does it for you, it does it for you. And uh, we're also going to use a nice round brush for all those fine details. And you can do this on a large canvas, a small canvas. This is a little bit smaller than what I use on a normal basis, but I'm really loving these. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to start with our nice big flat brush and we are going to go ahead and paint in our background. So I'm giving my brush a nice little rinse off in my water cup just to get it primed and ready to go and we're going to go in with bright yellow and white so i'm just taking a little bit of white bringing it close to my yellow here just to get a nice buttery look if butter was kind of neon and i'm just going to go ahead and start filling in the top portion of my canvas here and I'm kind of using nice X motions with my hands, but it really doesn't matter how you fill it in. But you want to start filling in the top. Don't fill in the bottom quite yet because we're going to add some stuff later. So I'm filling in the top and once you kind of have it about halfway filled in, you're going to go in with a little bit more yellow versus the yellow white mixture. And with that yellow, I'm going to kind of start towards the bottom of that section and just kind of blend it up into my yellow and white. And the only way you blend is just by mixing it together more while it's still wet. It doesn't really blend very well if it dries. So now that I have that blended in, I'm going to go in, rinse my brush, and we're going to mix together a nice green. So I'm going to take my nice bright yellow and mix it with some of my cobalt blue and we're gonna want it to be a bright green so you don't need a lot of blue. You want a little bit more on the yellow side. And I'm gonna start below my yellow section and I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in that corner and I'm gonna blend this up into my yellow. If you happen to go a little bit too far with the green it does happen. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, you can always tone it down with a little bit more yellow just to help it blend in. And then I'm going to just deepen up the color down in that itty bitty corner by using a little bit of that dark blue. And I just blended it in with a little bit of my green and I'm just deepening up that corner. And I give my brush a really good rinse off. And I'm just kind of going back and forth and I'm going to get these all to blend together. And if I'm moving a little fast, don't be afraid to like pause me and say, whoa, Jen, hold up. I'm not done yet. And I'll still be here when you get back. So no rush. You can rewind me, fast forward me, whatever you got to do. But I'm just constantly just going back and forth between my yellow and my greens and I really want the yellow to kind of still stay wet up here so it's ready to blend in when I start moving into other colors. Um, so I'm just going back in with my yellow and white, re-blending the area. Yeah, and you can play with it as long as you need. Just get it to that happy place. But you still want to keep some of the areas wet. And the way I'm keeping it wet is uh, I'm just going back in with my previous colors, just going back and forth. So if I feel like an area needs a little bit more yellow, I use that to kind of help soften it, blend it out, and I'm just rinsing my brush off between colors. So now I'm going to go in with white and a little bit of red to make a very light pink. 
Um, and you kind of have to be careful with this because pink and green or red and green are not, they're not friends. So you want to keep it in the yellow area. And I'm just doing little touches. Just very, very lightly. You don't need very much paint at all. You just need a little bit. I'm going to make a little blob here and there. And if you go a little crazy with it, use that yellow and white to kind of tone it down. But if your yellow and white is already wet, it's going to be easier to kind of blend it in. So I have some little splotches here. And I might just go back in, yeah, a little bit more yellow and white, just to soften it. To make it a little bit more bearable. <laughs> but just be careful about getting that too close to your green. Otherwise, things happen and they're not the fun things. <laughs> All right, so once I get my background to a happy place, I have everything blended how I want it. Um, I have to get to that point and tell myself, no more. <laughs> um, you kind of have to tell yourself to stop because um, you got to let that canvas dry. And the best way to let your canvas dry is to stop putting paint on it. So let it dry, walk away. You can come back and pick up where you left off. And I have this kind of fast forward, so power of video editing, um, and it's magically dry. But you may have to pause me before you move on. But while you're waiting for it to dry, it's always a good time to, you know, get up, walk around, and stretch your legs. And before you know it, you'll come back, and here we are. So now that it's dry, I'm going to be using my medium brush, that nice little bright. I get them a little bit wet or filbert. Sorry, I almost forgot. Um, and we are going to create the stems for our flowers. So I'm going to use yellow with some dark blue this time to make a nice deep green. And I want to kind of flatten my brush out so I get a nice sharp edge because it's going to be the key to getting those nice little twiggies. And I kind of use the sharp edge of my brush to lead and I want these branches to kind of fan, fan out. And they're not technically branches because this is flower, but it's the stem. It's going to kind of part ways. And the trick with this is, is you kind of want to keep the little bits that kind of branch out from the main stem, you want to keep it under 45 degrees. I would say even less than that. And it kind of helps it more natural. It just gives it a better appearance in general. Much like you're merging on the freeway. You don't just cut right in there. If you do, you're scaring some people. Um, but you're just kind of lightly merging in. And I'm pressing very, very lightly. If you feel like your paintbrush is a little too blobby, you know, flatten it a little bit. It'll be good. And once I kind of have some stems in here, then I'm also going to create some pieces that kind of go off the canvas, maybe stick up from the bottom, kind of like grass. Because these flowers are kind of near grass and stuff. But as you can see, they're kind of fanning out a little bit. Not like in a literal fanning motion, but just a little bit. That way it's going to give our flowers some support and structure. So once I have those in there, I'm just going to give my brush a really good rinse off. And now we're going to add that floral aspect. So I'm going to be using red and white. But you want it mainly red and a little bit of white. That way it pops off, but it has enough white in it to kind of help push down that background. Because our reds look just a little bit translucent. And you want it to kind of pop a little bit more. And white helps out with that. Much like a primer to a paint. And this is paint, but normally we don't have primer. <laughs> well, we do, but it's different. <laughs> But I'm just lightly patting with my brush, creating some little blobs and clusters. And I'm just kind of going up, down. They're kind of still together. 
and I want it to kind of like touch on those ends of my stems. And if you feel like it's just, it's not really working, <laughs> the shapes that you're creating, like where they're touching, don't worry, you can make them larger if you need to, and then come back in and add more stems later. But they all just lightly touch. And I kind of like to have them arc across the tops. And they look like blobs now because they're kind of blobs, but we'll add more to them that kind of make them more floral looking. But once you have the base in there, then what we're going to do is we're just going to go back in with a little bit of our dark green color and our little bright or filbert brush. And we're just going to add some extra stems in there. Because right now you're probably finding some spots where you're like, how does that little stem hold up all that flower? Okay, maybe you weren't thinking that, but you know, I'm putting it out there. Um, so <laughs> we're just adding in some spare little stems just to help with the support. So if there's any areas that are looking a little wonky and you're not quite sure why, that might be part of it. It's just a lot of flower for a little stem. So you're just following the same, same kind of rules when we were making our stems. But once you have enough of those, then you just want to give your brush a really good rinse off. And we're going to go in with red and a little bit of our dark blue. So we make like a nice deep kind of red purple, but we want it more on the red side. Otherwise it won't blend as well. So once you get nice, like a red toned purple, then what we're going to do is we're going to add in the shadows for our blobs. Essentially, that's what they are now. <laughs> They're blobs. And I'm just going to do the same kind of tapping technique, but I'm going to follow along the bottom edge of the blob. The main blob, anyway. <laughs> I'm just lightly patting. Don't worry if it's a little dark because we'll blend it in. But you want to stick towards the bottoms because that's where our shadows are at. We're just pat, pat, patting. And it's important that you're patting and not stabbing with your brush. Let the brush do the work for you. Don't abuse it. So once I have that in there, I just give my brush a really good rinse off and I'm going to go in with straight red and I'm just going to kind of dab between the two colors, between the light red and the dark purpley red. And this helps them to just kind of soften and blend it out. So I'm just kind of dancing between the two with my brush and I'm going to give it a nice little rinse off and I'm going to add a bit more white to our red just to make it a little bit lighter of a pink, more like a cotton candy pink versus a bubble gum. And I'm going to tap this towards the tops just a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy because we got to add in some flowers here. We're just adding a little bit more shape to our little clusters. And also it's going to help some of these guys pop forward a little bit more. And sometimes less is more with this, so don't, don't go too crazy. <laughs> All right. So while our flowers are drying, we are going to paint in our butterfly. So I'm still using my little flap slash filbert brush, and I'm going to mix in yellow and red and just a tiny touch of white just to lighten up that orange a bit. And you can use either brush, you can use this brush, or you can use your little round brush. But the main trick is, is we're going to start with our large wing, so the top half, and we're going to kind of make a wedge. So it's kind of like a triangle, just inverted. So we have a nice kind of upside down triangle here. 
And then I'm going to make a smaller one where that point kind of meets the point of our other one. And you don't even really have to make much of a point for that bottom portion of the wing. It's just a little swipe with your brush that connects it. And that's your butterfly wing. <laughs> okay, maybe that's just the color of it. But now we're going to add in some details. So once you have that base down, then what we're going to do is we're going to swap to our smallest brush if you weren't already using it. And I highly recommend if you feel more comfortable using a different brush for different things, do it. But I'm going to take my little round brush and we're going to get a little bit of water on it and we're going to drip a little puddle right next to our black paint here. And I'm going to take this puddle and start adding some black paint to it just to thin out that paint because we're going to do these little details and we need our paint to be a little bit thin so it's easier to work with those small lines. So I'm just kind of thinning it out. And as you can see here, I'm kind of rolling and pulling my brush to get a nice little tip. So it gets that nice, nice little tip. And for these tiny details, you want to press really tiny and lightly. And I'm going to start by just kind of following that back edge of the triangle. And then I'm going to pull it down the side, but I want to press very lightly. Otherwise, you'll get a really big line. We want a tiny line, so I'm holding my brush like a pen or a pencil, and I'm just very, very lightly bringing it in. Don't forget to breathe, guys. It's important. <laughs> all right, so I have it down that top edge, and now I'm going to bring it in in the center. It's going to come all the way down. So we have our little triangle. And I'm going to do it again for that little piece. So I just kind of make a thick edge and then I'm just going to very lightly connect its edges just like so. And we got wings. Yes. All right. So once we have those, I'm just going to clean up this edge here a second. And then I'm just going to make a nice little line for the body. And you kind of want it pointy at the booty end. And then I'm just going to very, very lightly add some antenna. Oh, you got to press very, very lightly. Make sure you have that nice little tip too. That helps too. There we go. All right. So now that we have those, I'm going to add the little veins. And you just have to press very, very lightly. Use that tip. And you just kind of fan them back. You can make some fun designs here. They don't have to be realistic. Usually if they have like a little wedge space up towards the top of the wing, I'll fill it in. But you're just making some lines throughout the wing. And this is your butterfly. You can have them look however you want them to look. Maybe it's a different species. It's not just a monarch. But you really want to make sure you've thinned out your paint with water. It makes it a lot easier to do these tiny lines, especially that rolling and pulling technique. So once you have those in there, then what we're going to do is we're going to refocus and we're going to come back to our flowers. Okay. So I'm going to make a lighter pink. So I'm using red and white. You're just going to use a little bit more white this time. And for our flowers, we are going to make the petals of the flowers. And they're fairly simple. You're letting the brush do the work. So the trick is you just got to pull towards the center. So a little flick, little flick, little flick, little flick. There you go. You got a flower. And they're just kind of fanning out from one point. And I like to do five petals. You can do four. Do little bits here and there. And you're just going to go ahead and start kind of focusing towards the top of your little flower bunch. And I'm going to go in with a little bit more white after it. 
and just add in some extra ones. But we want these lighter ones kind of sticking towards the top a little bit. So I'm going to use a little bit more white here after I have one set of flowers and I'm just going to kind of overlap them a little bit and we're going to go brighter. That way we get some popping happening. And I'm going to do this with all the little bunches. So take your time because you still got to let that butterfly dry. I'm just coming around, adding in those little flowers. So now it looks more like a bunch of flowers versus some blobs. <laughs> and you don't have to be nice to me. I, I know they look like blobs, so it's all right. We're making progress. So after I have the first set, I'm going back in with a little bit more white on my brush. With that pink, adding some brighter flowers. They're kind of sticking more towards the tops of the bunches. And once I have these in there, then I'm just going to do some darker pink flowers that kind of stand off a little bit. So for that darker pink, I'm just going to use a little bit more red. And these ones will kind of be towards the bottom a little bit, like midway towards the bottom. That way it doesn't look like you just got flowers trying to cover up a blob. <laughs> then it looks like you have more flowers and it gives you more depth. So once you get those in there, I'm just going to give my brush a really good rinse off. And we're going to come back to our butterfly. So we have to add in some beautiful little white spots to our butterfly because all monarchs have them. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of white and I'm just going to go along that thick border there and just nice little boop. And not just one, you're going to do a couple and you're just kind of fitting them in there. You can do some bigger ones, you can do some smaller ones, but they're just all along the edge and in those thicker black areas. I got one and don't forget about that bottom section of your wing. Same thing. If the black is still wet, you know, just let it dry a little bit longer. You can come back to it. Also, don't forget to add that little bit to his head for his eye. All right, so we got our butterfly in there. And now we're going to come back and we're just going to add a couple more details to our flowers. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow with some white and my little brown brush. And we're going to highlight some of these stems and grasses. And it's going to be more towards the tops, just little accents here and there. Nothing too crazy. You can have as much or as little as you want. And if you go a little too crazy, you can always go back in with a little bit more blue or dark green later. But we want to add in these nice little floaties. So I'm using the back end of my brush, giving a little dip in my white, and just a nice little boop, little dot. And then I'm going to take my finger, hopefully a clean one, and you're just going to press and rub. And then you can kind of stamp a couple more out there. Let's give it another try. So I'm going to tap with the back end of my brush, and then I'm just going to press and rub in a little small circle, not big circle, a small circle, and it's going to give you these nice little floaty fuzzies that just add the magic to the painting. And at this point, I've come to realize that I kind of want to darken up some of my stems a little. So I'm going to go in with uh, my little round brush here 
and I'm going to use just the dark blue just a little bit and I'm just going to darken up towards the base of my stems so I'm just following in those same lines just deepening up so they pop a little bit more but a little bit can go a long way so <laughs> Take it in stride, guys. Um, but once you get those finishing touches in there, you are done and you've finished our Butterfly Wishes painting. Good job. Give yourselves a nice pat on the back. High five whoever you painted with today and um, show it off to the world. Sharing's caring, guys. I look forward to seeing these and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.